You know, it's been a long two years. And after two years, I think we're all changed, which I, I think is it's actually appropriate that this movie is out now. This horror film called The Changed. <laughs> Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore. It is my mission and my duty to tell you about independent films worth seeing. You know, they're in limited release. They're on video on demand. They're everywhere and you need to check them out. And I'm excited today we'll be talking to the director of The Changed, Michael Mangelo. Before we do that, please share this video, subscribe to the channel if you, you've never heard of us before. And uh, give this give this video a like. That way, more people will see it. And also, if you'd like to support our work, uh, you can get a nifty Film Threat T-shirt, just like the one I'm wearing now. You could even get yourself a little Film Threat mug. It holds liquid of all types, cold and hot. Mm. This is the best mug ever. Uh, in any case, I appreciate if you would do that. Real simple. Just go to shop.filmthreat.com. It helps support our mission in life. Let's get right to it then. Uh, the director of The Changed, Michael Mangelo, is here today. Michael, good to chat with you and good to talk to you after all these years. Yeah, it's so good to see you and I really appreciate the support, Chris. Long live film threat. Ah, uh, well, thank you. Yeah, uh, we probably met at a film festival, but I know I recognize your name when I saw it. I, I know it's like, I know this guy, I know this guy. L let's get right in. This Ooh. horror film is so perfectly timed to, I think, something that's in the zeitgeist right now. Yeah. And it's akin to, it's a horror film that, and I'm not a big fan of gore and blood in horror films. I like horror films that are more psychological in nature. This is all about psychology, all yeah. about there is something in a community that is changing people and something doesn't quite feel right. It almost feels like kind of what's happening now. <laughs> yeah. we're, and and we're going to get to, because Tony Todd is in this movie. I'm a huge fan of Tony Todd. I have an interesting Tony Todd story I'll tell you later. But what was the inspiration for this? Wh how did this all come together? And it's, um, I mean, you just did a beautiful job with the tone of it. I mean, I was riveted from beginning to end. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I mean, the obvious uh, influences are from Philip Kaufman's Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I'm a, I'm a fan of Don Siegel's version as well and Abel Ferreira's uh, Body Snatchers. So those, uh, that little subset, subset of uh, horror thriller genre films, the Pod People movies, uh, where that influence came from. And I thought as much as I love those movies, you know, let's figure out a way to retell that story and mix it up a little bit. And so we made some changes, but also had some of the familiar tropes. Well, it's, yeah, it, it is that, I mean, it really comes from the performances of the actors kind of kicking off with Tony Todd. So how, talk to me about the cast. Like, how'd you get Tony? I mean, who <laughs> to me, I, uh, my quick story, I met him in the early nineties on the set of night of the night of the living dead, the remake Oh, the Tom Savini, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, with Patricia Tallman, Tom Savini directed me in a scene. I was a featured mm -hmm. zombie with kind of a droopy eye. And, <laughs> and Tony Todd was there, and it was like it was like going to summer camp. <laughs> it was just people that were fans of George Romero and his dead movies, and of course, fans of Tom Savini. And I got to hang out with Tony. I got pictures hanging out with him. He's the nicest guy, just a regular dude. I mean, since then, of course, he's blown up, but also, the other members of the cast don't necessarily know them, but they're really all grounded in a reality. So how did you put together this, this cast? Well, I'm really lucky. I've uh, This is my uh, sixth feature film. So I've developed uh, a little bit of a troupe. And um, chief among those is uh, my business partner um, and longtime great friend, Jason Allen Smith, who plays um, the, the, the lead uh, after Claire Foley of Kim, who plays Kim, and of course, alongside uh, the great Tony Todd. So um, we also had Carly Avers in the cast, who plays Jane, who's terrific, who I've worked with on one other film, who's just wonderful. Doug Tompos, uh, who plays the role of Kurt. Um, I've worked with him since uh, being Michael Madsen. 
uh, which Jason was also in as well. And um, uh, Maggie Champagne had, had a small role and she's done a bunch of trauma films as well as other great work. And um, we had Ryan McCarthy who was in Diane as well. So a lot of that cast came from just picking up the phone, but I was very fortunate to meet Claire Foley who I'd never worked with before. And uh, through a contact at Paradigm uh, that actually came through our producer, Eloise Asmuth, um, we were able to get Claire Foley, who many people know as the Sinister Girl, but she uh, played Ivy Pepper in Gotham and she has a great body of work and is just so talented and just a wonderful person as well. And with Tony Todd, that came from having conversation uh, with my producers and the folks who are involved in the investment side, which is who would you like to get? I said, gosh, if, you know, if I wrote this part with somebody in mind, it's Tony Todd. If we can get him, wouldn't that be great? And uh, we worked through a casting agent and he and his manager read the material and they loved it. And they, they're the reason it happened. Of course, they, they worked with us um, in every way possible for our small budget to make it occur. And uh, we're very grateful because Tony Todd, like you said, is uh, just a gentleman and a regular guy and uh, he couldn't have been a better collaborator. And, and I really love that, you know, you, you talked about Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I mean, the thing that is horrific about that is, you know, psychologically what's being what's happening. And I feel like there's so many elements of your film that kind of speak to like what's in the zeitgeist now, how, you know, people are being vilified for maybe not having, um, you know, uh, a, a, a certain political party affiliation or a, you know, what their medical status is. You know, I just see so much division in our world, in particular, if you're on social media, if you go out in the sunshine and walk around and smile at people, most of that doesn't exist, but it's, but it really, really struck me, which is why I had to watch it twice. And it <laughs> felt like, like this is like a, this could be like a great episode of Black Mirror, but I also, Thanks. really respect your choices and the way you went about it. You really focused on the character conflicts and then this sort of like, um, I don't want to get too much into spoilery, but there are many theories as to what's going on. And what I love is that you didn't explain all that much, right? Like a lot of times with a horror film, like, okay, with, you know, zombie movies, George Lucas or George Lucas, George Romero, <laughs> George Romero kind of set the, you know, here, here are the rules of zombie world. You get bit, you turn into a zombie. The way to get rid of a zombie is shoot him in the head. And you kind of set up these very simple rules and then let the characters play out. What led to those decisions? And I, and I, I had to just compliment you on it because it made the movie just so powerful that it, it worked on me. It, it, you know, I had to sit with the movie after. Oh, well, that, uh, tremendous compliment, especially coming from you. I do appreciate that. Um, well, letting, uh, it's like a monster movie. The less you see the monster, the, the more frightening it is. So uh, we figured uh, the more inexplicable it is and the less we explain it, the easier it's going to be for people to buy it. We actually um, made some trims uh, because we felt like we were over explaining in certain parts. So some of that was in the script, but I think in the final edit where, of course, is the last time you tell your story, we we're able to perfect it to the point where we're giving just enough for people to be able to have something to latch on to, um, but not so much that it's over-explained. I mean, I'm a big fan of M. Night Shyamalan's films, but his films that fail, I think, are the ones that just go too deep and too clinical in explaining every last thing, so it becomes easier to pick apart. And I'm glad, I'm glad that it worked for you the way that we were that we decided to tell the story in the final cut. Well, it le leaving so many things to the imagination, I think, made it so much more powerful. And when you look at, like, everything from, well, Jaws, right? I mean, right. and that was sort of the shark didn't work. Bruce yes. Shark. So that, <laughs> but then also, like, I think of, like, Seven, right? Like, sure. like, one of the most horrific moments is you never see it. And and I think that that's what really it made this really made this movie stick with me, where I had to watch it a second time and just, like, what is like, and, and, and I love that because you don't know, you have <laughs> no idea. And then when, when things take a turn, right. When there's this call to like, everybody go to this place, it's the government. Don't worry. We're going to take care of you. <laughs> yeah. Everybody go to this gymnasium. I think it is right. Like our high yeah, school. Yeah. And, and there are people that would say something doesn't feel right something doesn't feel right. Something is going on and I don't know what it is. 
And I think there's a lot of people that that feel that way. And I think that the last two years has made us maybe a little more suspicious of institutions. I don't know where you stand on that. I mean, that's yeah. even a, not a conversation we need to have. But I feel like right. what I like is, is that horror films like this one, like yours, can be therapeutic in a sense. And I, and I just love... I feel like some of the great choices you made as a director in this were things that you chose not to, like you said, like the M. Night Shyamalan films that like over explain, like better to leave mysterious. I feel like that was really effective. I know the film is like in theaters and limited release and is on video on demand, but like, have you had an opportunity to just see an audience and how they've responded to it? Because I just think that there's so much more that could be read into this film that's very powerful. Um, I was able to go to Fright Fest London, um, and they've been very kind to me. Uh, they they also screened our last film, Diane, and they played it in the big theater. They were going to play it in one of the smaller theaters, but at the last minute, I guess they decided to see how it played in the large theater. And you know, like any film, uh, you know, I know we lost some audience members, and some people didn't like it, but. There were some audience members uh, and, and actually a couple filmmakers came up to me afterwards and said they felt it was one of the best films they'd ever seen. So uh, what an incredible compliment to get. And it really was fun to sit in the back and you try and detach yourself from being the nervous filmmaker and this is your work up there and just try and get the vibe. And I really did concentrate at um, Dan- at uh, Fright Fest London and I was able to, I saw people moving forward and moving back and people whispering to each other. So. I knew the people that it worked on um, really got a lot out of it. And that was very gratifying. Yeah. It, it seems, I, I mean, I regret I didn't get to see it in a theater, you know, watch it on my, I have a decent sized TV though, a decent <laughs> size TV. but yeah, I think in the theater, this would really kind of work its way into, into your psyche. And I also like that it, um, the length of it, it's, it's yeah. shorter. It's, it's under 90 minutes. Right. And, to me, when I see a film like that, that always goes to the top of the stack. <laughs> I gotta see. It's like under 90 minutes, like boom. Yeah, you're in and out. But yeah, but like, and and the way it ended, I don't want to give away the ending, but I really love that ending. I love that <laughs> the way that you left things was, you know, just I I you know, I wasn't in an audience, but sort of a collective, oh, what? <laughs> um, Good. So, Thank you. I wish I'd seen it with an audience, but uh, really am impressed by this, uh, yeah. this, this work. Uh, I don't know, like, I mean, not like you even care, like what reviewers, but as, has it been getting like decent, you know, reaction from, from critics? We, uh, we did really well uh, during the festival circuit. Um, we've got um, the majority were extremely positive. Uh, I believe we earned an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm at the point, though, at festivals, I sort of have to keep an eye on that because we're still trying to sell the film and we're figuring out how to market the film and make it attractive uh, to somebody to get it out in the world. But at this stage, I stop looking at reviews and I even avoid going to the IMDb page. And, you know, there's so many people. It seems like it's only the haters come out at this point. You know, the people who love it, I hear from friends and I get comments on social media. Oh, I love this film. I love this film. Like we'll go write a review on IMDb um, because I know that it's, uh, you know, the squeaky, uh, was it the, you know, it's, it's always the squeaky wheels who are out there who are making the most noise. And I certainly would imagine that if, you know, people are coming up to me, uh, including other filmmakers saying it's one of the better films they've seen um, that there are going to people be people out there who like it. I mean, I could pick it apart all day long because, you know, I, I wrote and directed it, but, what really matters is how people respond to it. And of course it's no longer mine because it's out in the world. So I hope it has a nice life. Well, um, we'll be reviewing it uh, on our Friday live stream that we do um, with my colleague, Alan Ng. So we'll be talking about just a, just a review of the film to let, to let people know. But what I also really appreciated about the film was just sort of how minimalist certain things were played, which made it, I think more powerful because it felt more, real like this is if some you know world event like this happened it would probably happen in a more mundane way i mean that as a a compliment like a way of like this is how people would realistically react and so and i feel like it's always to me the mark of uh, a a creatively talented director is tone 
and you really got the tone just right. If you if you have any piece of advice to give indie filmmakers going off to make their first feature, do you have any piece of advice you could give, like how you can execute something as, as well as you did with The Change? Well, I, obviously having great actors is is key. I, I mean, I think a lot of uh, first time filmmakers, especially if you're making it low budget, um, you know, which is not to say you can't have a great friend who's a great actor, but I really think you owe it to yourself uh, to get a good cast and also to get yourself a good script. I mean, even though I wrote this script, you know, I had help, it went through workshops, I had readers look at it. So it's always just vetting the work because you really can't make um, a good movie without a good script and without good actors. As far as the tone, you know, maybe I'll get a little bit on a platform here. I think there's so much wrong with horror these days because everything seems to be um, satirical or tongue in cheek and there really doesn't seem to be anything at stake. And, you know, I like movies like Poltergeist. I like movies like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And um, I like horror that actually is trying to do something and say something as opposed to being tongue in cheek and, and not having anything to say other than um, you know, the just being a parody or trying to be silly. So I think that one of the things that we did, which maybe could be advice to other filmmakers, is don't be afraid to tell a real story about real people. People, if you do a good job, are going to want to watch it. Well, you, you did an amazing job with this film, and I encourage everybody to seek it out. The Changed, uh, it's limited release theatrically, available right. on video on demand. And uh, Michael, it's just a pleasure talking to you today on the Film Threat Podcast. Thank you. If I could give a quick shout out, of course, to everybody who um, worked on the film and thank them. And of course, to Quiver Distribution, the great people there who decided to release it. We're, we're so pleased to be in partnership with them. And uh, of course, to you, Chris, and to anybody who watches the film, thank you so much. Definitely check it out. Take care, Mike. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye.